All right. I have been waiting for this for quite some time. I upgraded because my old machine here is not doing too well when it comes to trying to edit 4K video. This M1 Max processor is able to handle 4K footage without even creating proxy media and optimized media. You know, you just port it in and it can work right from the original media in real time. So that sounds pretty awesome, big time saver. You just gotta love their packaging. Thunderbolt 4. To figure out how I was gonna get all the peripherals connected with this thing, I actually had to do a whole bunch of research about the different hubs and so forth, what connects to what, and I had to end up creating a schematic to figure out how I was gonna get everything plugged in, you know, all this audio gear and all these USB hubs and everything, and also how to take all my old hard drives that are in the old computer put them into this uh, box for four hard drives, which I'm gonna run in a RAID, RAID 1, 0, RAID 10. So it's mirrored and striped. So I'll let you know how it goes, but I've gotta migrate all of the- English so English as the main language. Press the return key. How rude. I've got to get all of the old software, all the audio software off of the old machine, migrate it over and get all the data moved over. It's gonna go fast, at least that's what I'm hoping. Speaking of fast, check this shit out. This is my old machine, uh, the work drive, the SSD work drive, 350 write, 500 read. Oh, there we go. That's about 500 now on the right also. I put the video cache on that drive, but the drive where I put most of the data and all the audio work is over here. This RAID drive, check the speed out on this guy. And here we go, bouncing around. 200 now down to 142 141 and the read speed about the same so pretty lousy hard disk drives get a little slower near the the middle and the end than they are at the beginning usually it's around 200 now it's below compare that to the new machine okay that's a little faster say our write speed 5500 megabytes per second 5200 read that'll do pig that'll do the migration started out okay the old machine i just did a time machine backup and then plugged that backup into the laptop and it grabbed all that information and and so that was a good start a couple things though first of all it wanted to update right away to monterey 12.2 Took the computer about 20 minutes to crank on that, even after the download. Heck of an update. Now it wants to install Rosetta in order to use OpenOffice, which is what I use instead of Word and Excel. OpenOffice, of course, is free. And unfortunately, I ran into some audio software problems. Even though I copied all of the Waves plugins, which are a huge amount of data, and the application is here in the second computer, and I've activated my second license, which is included, you know, with the original purchase. You can have it on two computers. The Waves central application wants to reinstall everything in order to activate it, instead of allowing me to just point to, you know, those already installed applications and hit a button that would say activate. So unfortunately, it's not smart enough to do that. I actually have to go through the whole process and install from scratch. And that's kind of a problem because it means I have to sit here for an hour trying to download and because my internet connection is kind of flaky, sometimes it fails and I have to do it over and over again. That's a real annoyance. Waves, you kind of suck. Wave says it completed, I clicked OK, and now it's exactly the same way it was before. Another install button. Why doesn't anything ever actually work? Trying the install again. The definition of insanity is trying the same thing and expecting a different result, but when it comes to computers, sometimes that actually works. It went up really quick. Now it's at 80%. It says copying. You know, it'd be nice if this software would actually tell me what it was doing. What is it copying? The other thing that would be nice is if there was a pause button or a resume button to deal with the downloads. 
you know, they basically tell you nothing. They make you wait, and then it doesn't work. Turns out I had to get the second licenses activated on a, on a web page in my account. And then they didn't tell me this, but I have to shut down Wave Central and then reopen it so that it knows that the second licenses are in there. Here's a crazy idea. What if Wave Central actually allowed you to do the second license right there in Wave Central where you'd expect it to be done? But no, things always have to be complicated. Day two of my transfer to the new system here. I've got the software part of it squared away. I had a little bit of trouble with the Steinberg software. I run Cubase and WaveLab. Both of them uh, have their licensor on, on this USB hardware licensor. But I had installed some trial software and it used a software e-licensor. So when I changed to the new computer, it was giving me these pop-ups griping about the software uh, e-licensor was being disabled because uh, the hardware configuration had changed. Well, yeah, the hardware configuration changed. I installed on the new machine. And the problem was I actually didn't have any software licenses. So uh, I went into their website, looked in my account, and there's the licenses, but they were only there because I did trial installations and they had expired. And those trials, you know, they were not showing up. So the license was in the system, but there's there's no valid licenses on it. So it's not causing me any trouble, but it's a hassle because they keep popping up telling me that they're being disabled, even though they actually have no functionality. So after doing some digging, I found that I could install this thing called uh, an e-licensing control center and then I could get rid of the nagging pop-ups. Kind of being a perfectionist, I guess, but I don't like these, these pop-ups. I like a clean system, you know? Steinberg system is, is actually quite annoying because they have three different software controls. Instead of integrating them all in one system that would handle the downloads and the licenses and everything else, I mean, it should be in one system, but they don't. They have a library manager, which frankly doesn't really work because, you know, it's telling me where things are. I go to remove them and it says it can't or whatever, and then you have to manually dink around with it. And then here we have the download assistant, which you know, it allows you to download all the different software, but it doesn't tell you which ones you own or which, which ones are free or are parts of other ones. So I end up downloading all kinds of crap that I didn't even know what it was or whether it was part of the program I ordered or not. And then you've got here, the, the licenses are handled separately. So it, it's kind of a, a major pain in the butt. On the other hand, Wave Central handles everything, the downloading, the licensing, well, I mean, in theory, at least, that's what it's supposed to do. It doesn't exactly do that properly, but they're trying at least. And here's the stupidity of the Steinberg products here, Download Assistant. Uh, for example, here is uh, the latest update, and I noticed that I didn't have it, so I went ahead and clicked Install. And the thing, you know, downloaded, it did its thing. And, you know, what is typical is when you go to install something, you, on a Mac, you get this DMG file and then you open it and you run the installer. So this thing finished, but never told me anything. So my assumption is it didn't install. So then I, I clicked it again. It started to download again. Okay, that's not right. And then I went and I saw down here in my downloads folder, Okay, and there's a Stein, okay, it downloaded something, so let's go there, and it tells me it's here, and so I'm gonna go in here, and oh, there's a, a file, maybe I need to install this file, and I see DMG in there, but it's not at the end, it's not a DMG file exactly, so I don't know what this is. I click on it, nothing happens, and I think, wait a minute, Maybe this thing actually already installed. So I go and open Cubase and indeed, there it is, 11041. So it was already updated, but it did this without telling me that it was doing it or even alerting me when it was done. So I don't know that it's done. 
the main thing is it deviates from standard procedure. Normally, when we download something, we have to do the install. So look, Steinberg, if you're going to change the rules, you got to tell us. The final step is going to be figuring out where I'm going to put this computer and then plugging in all of the, uh, the various hubs and so forth so that I can get all of this stuff plugged in. Obviously, you got to run the monitors to the new machine and plug in, of course, my hard drive. So I've got to open up this guy here, take out, I got four six terabyte hard drives in there with all my, uh, my work data, video and audio data there, and slap them in here so I can plug them in here. Wish me luck.